Hello everyone. Thank you for joining. Uh, this is Jamal Aref. I'm part of the Oracle Cloud Infrastructure team. As a continuation to our traffic management policy series videos, uh, in this one we are going to talk about uh, the failover policy and do a demo on the failover policy. Our safe harbor statement. All right, so moving forward. So for demo purposes, uh, here is my lab environment uh, for, for the demos. Uh, so I'll have a couple of web servers which are running in the Ashburn region. Uh, and, uh, when, and I'll use different traffic uh, management steering policies uh, to steer the traffic based upon the policy that I set up. Uh, and uh, I will just try to, so the zone name that I am using is the oci-demozone.com. Uh, and I'll create different labels along with these no zone name. Uh, and uh, once I create the traffic management sharing policy, I can have uh, uh, a policy, for instance, a failover profit policy where my primary is a web server one uh, and, uh, and my secondary is web server two. Uh, so when both the servers are running, it would uh, all, whenever I want to go to that particular zone, I would always be forwarded to the web server one. Uh, and then I'll sh do a, uh, like a failover where my web server comes down I'll see that how it actually fails over to the web server too so I'm logged into my OCI console uh, from here I can navigate to the uh, traffic management so let's uh, go to add services and then to traffic management steering policies uh, let me actually show you a couple of uh, my web servers which are running in the Ashburn region so I have uh, a web server one and a web server two uh, and the details of web server one uh, are inside the details page so I can see the public IP address the private IP address for each web server and similarly if I go back um, I can go to the web server 2 and take a look at the IP address information of web server 2 as well the public IP information uh, so I'll just open up the instances in each of the tabs so that I know the address the public IP addresses that I'm going to use in the A records that I'm going to create and let's go back to the traffic management uh, so let's once you are at the traffic management steering policy uh, click on create the traffic management and it gives you the five options of what kind of policy type that you want to create uh, so those these are the five policies that we went over during uh, in our slides as well so you have load balancer failover geolocation steering and then asn and ip prefix steering let's start with failover steering and failover just provide a, a generic name for your policy so let's just say uh, demo uh, the TTL I, I am going to give is 30 seconds so 30 seconds is the failover time that it's going to take um, over here I am defining an answer pool so for failover priority base it's always one and I'm create a pool for my uh, uh, like for my web servers so my answer pool is for example the first answer pool name is web server 1 and I can just name the answer pool as web server 1 I have to create an a record for my web server and in the answer pool 1 uh, which which is web server 1 I can give the IP address of my uh, instance in uh, let me just go back to the Ashburn region and within the Ashman region, I can go to DNS demo one, which is my first web server. And I can just take the public IP address from here and paste it in the page over here. I can create another uh, pool, which is my web server two. Add, uh, create another record for this one. Copy the IP address of my second web server and paste it over here so i've created two different answer pools now here i'm going to select the pool priority so i'm setting up pool one as my primary and i'm setting as pool two as my secondary so if both of the pools are away up since this is a failover policy it will always send the traffic to pool one now i can also associate a health check in the health check uh, it I can provide a name so I can say health check for my failover policy 
provide the interval in seconds, choose the protocol between HTTP or HTTPS, and then some advanced uh, options uh, that what kind of port. Uh, so I have a, it, it should be on port 80. I'm just providing a basic path, which is my index, index page. Uh, and then I'm just uh, just uh, using the option, uh, not using the optional uh, parameters over here. On the domain, I'm going to attach a label of uh, failover uh, to the zone that I have. So failover.oci-demozone.net. Now I can go ahead and create the policy. The policy gets created in a minute and then uh, you can see the details page of the policy. In the details page on the top, it just gives you information that what type of policy it is, what's the TTL, uh, and then how many answer count. Uh, it also associates that uh, mentions that what is the attached health check with this policy. In the policy narrative, it tells you that uh, what's the policy priority that you selected when you were creating multiple pools, uh, and what is the priority that you selected. So you can see that uh, you have the answer pool priority where web server one has greater priority than the web server two pool and in the pons policy answer data you can see the health status of each individual uh, servers or a records that were pr provided over here uh, this actually uh, the answer data over here that is provided is uh, get, is available through the health check uh, so the health check uh, says that the status of the health check is healthy and it is based upon the TTL value that you selected when you create the policy. So if any of the uh, if web server goes down and the traffic should be failed over to the web server too. If web server is one, then the traffic would always be forwarded to the first web server. You can also on the left hand side in the resources, uh, you can also take a look at the attached domains. So right now the attached domain is the failover.oci at amazon.net domain that we created. Uh, and if there are any unpublished changes that you have made and you have not published them, it would uh, it would show up in here in the unpublished changes. I have opened up uh, an incognito window and let's go ahead and go to our uh, zone that is attached to our failover policy. So that is failover.oci-demozone.net. And you can see that this actually uh, reflects to the first web, this actually resolves to the web, web server one. Uh, in the Oracle Cloud infrastructure, a demo page. Uh, so if I uh, just do a refresh, uh, I, every time that I'm doing a refresh, it's always going to the first web server uh, because my web server is up and running uh, and, it, and the priority states that it should always be resolved to the first web server. I will never get back to my Cosia console. So this was my web server one, uh, which is currently serving all the traffic. Uh, how about if I uh, stop this web server and just trying to uh, mimic a failure on the web server one and I'll see that how my fa uh, failover policy on the traffic management uh, would divert the traffic and now resolve to my web server two, uh, which is serving my traffic. The instance has uh, stopped now. If I navigate back to uh, my policy, the traffic management policy, I can see that the current health status says still show, shows healthy uh, because of the TTL uh, that is set on my uh, on my failover policy. However, if I go back to uh, my health checks, I can get more detailed information that how my uh, currently my web servers are behaving. So the health check that I created was health check failover policy. I'll go into the health check failover policy. Uh, this is the health check that was attached to my failover policy statement and in the health check history uh, i should see that uh, through the different vantage points what is the current status of my web server so you can see if i scroll down uh, like maybe a minute ago when i haven't uh, had not made the change i could see that all of the uh, uh, like all of the all both my web servers you can see the different uh, endpoints both my endpoints were current, were active uh, and uh, the vent at different from different vantage points uh, the health check was coming as available but now you can see that in the latest so since it uh, the health check that I created was updated after, I think after every 30 seconds uh, I'm seeing that after each uh, 30 second time frame uh, you can see the third uh, the timestamp over here uh, there is a difference from uh, different vantage points that um, one of my web servers, which was my web server one, is currently down. 
so let's uh, go back to the traffic management and see that if the health status is uh, changed at, in the traffic management policy as well. Since the traffic management policy picks up all the data from the uh, health check, it should reflect back over here as well in the health status that one of the instances is unhealthy. So now let's open up another tab and go to the uh, endpoint again. So if I go to failover oci-demozone.net, I can see that now uh, the, the traffic is being served from the web server too, uh, and the traffic is automatically uh, diverted and resolved to a different backend endpoint which is currently active. So that's all from this video. Thank you for joining.